So this is the second part to Tektronix TDS-784A oscilloscope repair. And I'm in the process of actually recapping the process support again because when I originally recapped it I just jerry-rigged some through-hole components as SMD capacitors. And now I'm removing the reason why I did it is because I just originally wanted to use what I had so I can at least test the scope to make sure that everything else was working okay no custom amplifiers or anything were bad on it so once I verified at least the scope works I went ahead and did a parts order and I did receive the proper SMD capacitors and so forth and also the relays for the attenuator board and so forth so that's what I'm going to be doing I'm going to be recapping the rest of the scope and I'm going to be changing the relays in the attenuator board which is a long process but it's necessary because those relays are reading high resistance and when you go down the scale and up the scale you can see the offset so yeah those relays are definitely shot but one of the things you want to make sure when you're ordering capacitors is that you're ordering the correct size and for that you need a caliper you need something to be able to measure the diameter you go ahead take your old capacitor and you essentially measure the diameter and then you go ahead and go onto the data sheet when you go ahead and type your value and voltage of course make sure you get the correct diameter too as well and in certain devices where height matter make sure you get the correct height too as well and then another thing too you want to make sure that you do is also get ones that are high hours so that way you don't have to do the job a year or two down the road and get ones that are 105 or better rated capacitors because they're just going to last a lot longer and so forth with the heat and everything that's inside the scope. So just make sure you order high quality components and stuff and they'll last probably the life of the scope pretty much. So I'm going to go ahead and put the camera up and I'll show you at least how to actually solder an SMD capacitor onto the board easily and so forth. And then when I remove this front panel I'll actually show you how to remove them. And I'll show you my method so you don't lift the pad and stuff like that. It's less risk and stuff like that. And then how to put the capacitors back on there, of course. So here's one of the through-hole capacitors that I left on the board just to go and show you how to actually solder manually an SMD capacitor onto the board so you don't have to use heat gun or tape off the board or anything like that. They're pretty easy. So first thing we got to do is go ahead and remove the old capacitor. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. And we're just going to lift off the leg there. And then we're just going to go ahead and there and there. And there you go. And now we're just going to go ahead and clean that up. I got to go ahead and get a rag though too so I can clean up the flux. Before I put the new one on there. <laughs> Then you go ahead and take a high quality wick. Don't buy those cheap wicks because it's going to be a pain in the ass to work. We've we'll always get a good one. And here we're just going to go right here. We're just going to go ahead and remove, of course, the old solder. There you go. And then we'll go ahead and clean it up. So we can clean the pad. And we're only going to tin one side of it so the capacitor sits flat. And therefore, we can actually position the capacitor kind of harder to do when the camera's actually in front of you but this is just to demonstrate okay and then we'll go ahead and take some solder there and we'll go ahead and tin up one of those pads there they're already pretty much tin up but what we're going to do is add some solder to one side so that way we have a place so we can hold the capacitor we're going to take our capacitor now you can use the tweezers or you can even use your fingers or whatever, it doesn't matter. So we're going to position the capacitor. And then what we just tin there. We're going to hold it in place and then there you go. And now it's sitting straight flat on the board of course too as well. That's why we didn't solder the other side so it doesn't lift it up. And then all you have to do, and let me see if I can actually see because the camera's actually blocking my view. We're just going to go and solder the other leg on the other side. Okay. And then we'll solder the original side all the way down. You want to make sure it's too and it's flat. So there you go. That's all you have to do pretty much. 
and then you can do the rest of them exactly the same way that's the easiest way to do because then they sit flat on the board they're not lifted up I don't use very much solder when I go and do the original side just use enough so that way it adheres to the bottom of the capacitor and holds the capacitor in place then I go ahead and solder the other lead and then I go back and then retouch up that other one and that's it and pretty quick effortless then you don't have to worry about taping off the board using a heat gun because if you use a heat gun then you got to use a preheater so you don't warp the board you got to tape off the areas like where there's plastic close by or any other ICs and stuff like that around and it becomes a pain in the neck this way here you do it and you don't have a problem or you can even use solder paste if you want to do I use a low melt silver alloy solder which is what they use from the factory so that's what I'm using on this but you can use you know of course let it solder or whatever too as well but that's it so now I'm gonna go ahead and move the front panel and I'll show you how to actually remove them now now to remove the front panel of one of these scopes is pretty easy you just take the ring that's around there it unclips out and then you can just pop that out there's no screws holding that in and same thing with this front panel here there's no screws you just hit the two corners there and then you just slide it out there and you know let me go and see if I can give you a better shot so you can see what I got unplugged and here we're gonna go ahead and unplug this here you just pull it straight out here you go and pull this ribbon cable nice and straight out and then your grounding tab and usually it comes right out but it's pretty good stuck in there and there goes your front panel now it's completely out and the capacitors we're going to have to replace are these here because I didn't change none of those at all the first time around. So I'm going to go and show you how to properly move these without lifting the trace out. In this part I'm going to properly show you how to remove an SMD capacitor off the board. And this really applies especially if the leads are corroded due to electrolytic leaked out. And the reason why I'm going to show you how to do that because it's not as straightforward as most people think. Most people I've seen try to do this attempt. They either heat each side there trying to lift it out or they use a heat gun and try to lift it out or they even add flux. Well, flux makes it a little bit better but I've seen people do it that methods and what happens is they end up damaging the traces as a result. Because the problem is is that electrolytic attacked whatever alloy is in that solder so now you have to heat that at a way hotter temperature because it got to higher melting point now and the problem with that is is by doing that you're really risking damaging the traces and also the surrounding components around that capacitor the best and easiest method I found to do and I've literally done thousands of these and haven't had an issue since doing it this method is take your diag cuts take your diagonal cutters alright you go right here, you hold on to it, and you just go back and forth, back and forth for pushing down pressure. Now this one isn't corroded, so it might take some time there. Okay. Sometimes when they're corroded, they just pop off like that. But usually it's a little bit quicker once they do. And as you can see, no damage to that trace whatsoever at all. Now you can go ahead and apply your flux or whatever and go ahead and clean that up and take of course the old leads out and since this case here really wasn't corroded I'm just gonna go ahead and use the rick here and just clean it up a little bit alright and then we'll go ahead and clean up the flux there and it's ready pretty much to mount a new compressor onto that's all you have to do pretty easy straightforward no issues there so we'll go ahead and clean this really good and you can go ahead and retin the pads if you want and as you can see there it looked like brand new now that capacitor didn't leak out so it wasn't bad but if you have it where it's corroded you have to use a lot of flux fresh solder repeat and do it a couple times to get that looking clean again and then in some cases where the corrosion set on there actually work its way underneath the solder mask and everything and underneath the chips and stuff 
And when it gets that bad, you're going to need a base to neutralize the acids and stuff like that. And you may even have to remove dye seas and stuff like that to clean up under there or wash the board as some people refer to it as to properly do a good job on that. But in this case here, because this board is in good shape, we're just going to go ahead and solder a new one on. And I'll go and show you that too as well. So we'll go ahead and go to positively here. We'll go ahead and just do one side and show you how quick and easy this is. Well, if I don't drop the capacitor, but try and do things with camera in front of me and a solder iron. You know, it's kind of... Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just position it right there. Alright, we'll hold it there. We'll make sure it's flat down. We'll make sure it's lined up. Now that we got it lined up, let's go ahead and apply solder to the other lead there. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and do this side again. And there you go. And now you just clean the flux off that and you're done. And see, that's the way it should look. It should sit nice and flat where it's not lifted off the board. And then you just go ahead and do the rest of the capacitors the same way. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and recap this whole entire board. And I'll be back right when I'm done. So I went ahead and finished recapping this control board right here and there's the old SMD capacitors. And let me go and show you the end result. And that there is how you want your board looking. You want it to look nice and clean and be able to go to the point where another technician that goes in there won't be able to tell if you actually did work to the scope or not that's how you want that's how you know you did a good job you don't want bodge jobs on there unless you have to of course because sometimes you'll get traces that broken so then you got to go and jump a wire over or whatever but you want it nice and clean what I hate and I do have to say this and stress this because dealing with eBay buying a lot of scopes and other test equipment and stuff I see this quite a bit and what I see a lot of people do is they'll attempt to do the repair. They have an improper solder iron, like they'll have one of those plug-in types with no temperature control in there. They'll go in there and they'll pretty much wreck the board. And I even seen it bad enough to the point where not only the guy burnt the board, he actually tried to put electrical tape to cover his damage and stuff like that. And of course you can assume what he did next. He listed it on eBay as is, untested, played stupid. And then I ended up buying it, and the thing was pretty much worthless. I ended up opening up a claim and getting my money back, but don't be the guy that does that. Please don't. If you want to attempt to fix it, and you're a newbie and trying to learn, that's fine. Just don't turn around and sell back on eBay as untested and play stupid and stuff like that. It's just dishonest and stuff like that. Plus, us tech engineers don't want... <laughs> a molested scope you know we don't want something that you went in there and molested pretty badly we go in there and look at it we see oh crap that ain't gonna be repairable <laughs> or we have to spend many days and hours trying to go ahead and trace out everything and stuff like that because you went in there and molested it and then worse you were dishonest about it and didn't admit that you did that and now we gotta go ahead and get your bullshit pretty much we don't want that you know now, if you follow the methods I showed you a little bit earlier, you'll be fine because you won't, won't risk lifting traces. And if you solder them on the way I showed you to it, you'll do it nice and cleanly and you'll get the hang of it. Just make sure too, of course, that you're using an appropriate solder station with temp control and that you have, of course, your temperature set to the melting point of the solder you're using and so forth. And you want one with fast recovery. Now what I mean by that is it actually has the sensor in the tip itself on there so it's going to be able to react fast to temperature change and stuff like that. The cheap so um, Chinese solder irons don't do that and it tends to have to take longer for it to recover for you to be able to keep that appropriate temperature and stuff like that. Invest in a decent solder station. Now there is some Hakos and other ones that do the job pretty good. They are like about a hundred bucks and stuff like that. You don't have to spend a ton, ton of money on them. Just get a decent one if you're doing this type of work. Now, if you're the guy that doesn't have as good eyesight, invest in a microscope. Learn how to work under the microscope and stuff like that, and you'll get the hang of it after a while. Nothing's impossible, pretty much. 
No, I worked on iPhone boards and stuff like that all the time, and I'm dealing with literally high-pitched components that are really, really, really smart where you need a microscope to <laughs> look to be able to see the components and stuff like that. So stuff like this is a piece of cake. It's like gigantic to me. It's like you guys working on through-hole components and stuff like that to me. So it's no big deal to me, but if you're learning, you can learn. I would recommend learning on something much cheaper, of course, and stuff like that. Like, get one of those boards off eBay because they do sell one to learn SMD soldering and stuff like that that you can practice on for a while. And then work your way up to something like this. But, whatever you do, don't attempt to try to fix it and then throw it back on eBay and try to sell it. Don't do that. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this control panel back into the scope and next we'll work on the serial board pretty much here's the four SMD capacitor we're replacing on the Centronics interface board so we're gonna go ahead and use the method I showed you again and you go and take your diagonal cutters you go ahead and get a good grip on there and then you just go turn you want to lift you could just turn to it breaks loose and because if they were corroded, this would be a lot easier because they just come, they usually take a couple of turns and then they're out. But they're not, just be patient. And then there you go. And then you can lift this, you can cut this right here. Take the bottom pad there. And as you can see, padding, um, no damage pretty much. And it's nice and clean. Then you can do the next. Um, all of them the same way and we'll go ahead and do another one just to demonstrate the method now these here are not leaky so that's why they're taking a little bit longer on leaky ones this is actually going to be really easy because it only takes a couple turns and then they're out but the reason why I'm doing it this method is because it keeps from putting too much stress on those pads there because if you're trying to lift it or trying to solder or use a heat gun for that you have to do it at a hotter temperature and then you're probably going to try to lift it as you're going and then you're going to end up lifting the pad and that's how you end up damaging the pad and traces. This is the reason why I do it this way. It works really good. I've done over 2,000 caps this way and I never damaged the pad or trace this with method. Just keep down and apply downward pressure. Make sure of course there and then we'll go ahead and just do this last one right here. Okay, and there you go no damage to any of the pads pretty much effortless if they're corroded it's going to be a lot easier because it only takes about a couple turns and out they come so now I'm going to go and clean this up and I'll put the new capacitors on there and I'll go and show you that the scope still works so I went ahead and finished replacing all the electrolytic SMD capacitors in the scope and we're going to go ahead and fire her up and see if she actually still works and we didn't destroy anything. Hopefully it will still pass self-test. So let's go and power it up. Yeah, it does take a while for it to come on. That's normal. Definitely boots up faster though, I noticed that. And there you go, fast. But we're going to do a full cell test on this thing. So we're going to go Chef Utility. Action here. Okay. We'll go ahead and execute it. It's going to take a while. Because it does take a while to run the full self test on it. Now what you're seeing there is normal. You will see lines through the screen. You'll hear relay clicking and see some weird lines just go throughout the screen. That's actually normal. That's part of self test. So we'll go ahead and let it run its course. And hopefully we'll get a pass. And then here you get to see what a, a, um, 
Tektronix TDS self tester is still in full. Now one of the things I do have to actually fix before I can pass SPC is I have to replace 16 of these relays in these um, tenerator boards and that's because they go on high resistance and in different ranges you know you got a uh, different offset one to the other it's not normal and I tested the actual resistance on those relays and found it is actually the relays that are the problem Preamplifiers are fine at least I think I mean I really put the fan by to see if it made any difference but it doesn't write that cold or hot so I doubt the preamplifier and I'm pretty sure it's the relay especially after testing channel 1 and I saw one of the relays was high resistance so that's the first thing I'm going to tackle is replacing all the relays and there's 16 of them now the thing about it is it's not an easy job because they're on ceramic board and they're tightly fitted so you do have to cut the old relays out then you have to go ahead um, desolder the leads off the ceramic board clean it up and then solder the new relays onto the board and you're dealing with tight space so you do need a pin solder iron or a very good one now these are the relays these are the Panasonic ones they're the direct replacement for these here that's gonna be for a whole nother video though because that's gonna be a four hour process because I gotta go ahead and take the whole acquisition board out I go ahead, gotta go ahead and unscrew the tenerator um, assembly out, and then I gotta go and desolder each one of those signal leads off the um, hybrids, and then actually move the whole hybrid module out, and then you can access the relay, and then go one by one and replace those relays. So that's gonna be a job. For now, I just wanna go ahead and at least solve the SMD capacitor issue with this thing. Scope did work, so at least now it is. I might go ahead and also recap the power supply too while I'm at it. it the capacitor is test fine and there's no sign of leakage, so I may just leave them alone. The scope is low hour, so and let's see what she says. Hopefully, it pass. And yep, she passed the cell test, so all the boards pass. So that's good, it does work. And let's just see if we still get our channel. Yep, okay. I don't think I would have affected it anyway, but why not check? Yep, there you go. So scope is working pretty much. So this concludes this video. And then the next part will be repairing the tenerator board.